And in business, the Minister of Finance recently alerted Nigerians to the possibility of a recession due to the drop in oil prices and to the other negative effects of the current viral pandemic. This means that the Federal Government of Nigeria had accepted and adopted the narrative of Western governments and verdict of multilateral agencies predicting recession for Nigeria without us considering the gulf of differences that exist between Nigeria's economic situation and that of most industrialized nations or closely evaluating our options. For most developed countries, growth has peaked in several sectors requiring ingenuity and innovation for such countries to achieve even 1% real growth. Nigeria, on the contrary, has many growth gaps and unfulfilled needs, which translate into brilliant opportunities for development. Indeed, in our present circumstances, the federal government should seek out and implement ideas and strategies that will accelerate real economic growth, targeting a minimum gross domestic product GDP growth rate of at least 6% from 2021. To take a look at this is Bright's Jaja, founder of I Create Africa. Thank you for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. There is the presumption that COVID-19 is driving us towards a global recession, but does this have to be the case? Um, I think that's definitely going to happen, especially with the latest report from the Vice President's Office of, uh, I think, 39 million people losing their jobs. Um, I think definitely in the next couple of, we probably will not feel it right now, but in the next couple of months, we'll start feeling that. What can Nigeria or even Africa leverage on to avoid this economic storm? Or would you say it's too late already? I wouldn't say it's too late. I, I feel like um, the reason why I wouldn't say it's too late is because this is just the beginning. Um, there's a lot of things that's going to happen as as the year goes by and in the next couple of years. I think this is an opportunity for the governments of Africa to come together, unite and build Africa, build industries. One of the major um, problems that we're going to face is most of this aid that we normally receive would probably not come anymore because every country wants to focus on their own um, and they have to figure out their own problems and find a way to solve it. So we'll have to face the challenges of finding a way to fund ourselves. Secondly, um, globalization is going, to be, it's going to, it's going to reduce because most countries are going to be closing their borders. Um, COVID-19 is here right now, but we're, how we show sure that's the end? How we show sure that we're not going to face another pandemic in the next couple of months or, in, or, ne or next year? So I think this is the time for Africa to focus on, first of all, creating infrastructure that supports technology, creating infrastructure that, that supports pro um, proper health care, um, education, empowering the young people with the skills that is, that, is, that is required to build and to leverage on our resources and build, tech, build in industries across, across, across Africa. Uh, please help us break this down. There's conversation about tech being uh, the future. How can it be used to solve uh, many problems, especially those of our economy? Tech, tech, is, tech is the future. Tech is not just the future. Tech is now, um, especially when it comes to communication and transactions. Um, we're going to face a lot of lockdown kind of situation as we go forward. And the only way we're going to be able to communicate and transact is going to be through technology. So this is the time where every organization has to start looking for a different way. Every organization has to start looking for, you know, a different strategies on how they can adapt new technologies to be able to communicate, transact, and be able to keep the, the economy floating. How can the youth lead the way in this economic growth stimulus? The youth are the only solution. When it comes to this this situation that we're in, um, I was opportune to be involved in a hackathon. I mean, a bunch of hackathons the past couple of months, um, organized by other countries, literally getting young people like me who are experts in various you know industries to come together and brainstorm on solutions. I was I was I was part of one that was, was organized by Forbes this weekend, and we, we literally came up with ideas to help um, Detroit. Um, small businesses using technology. So the youth are the only solution. But I just think in Nigeria, we don't value our young people. And trust me, they are the only ones that have the answers to these questions. There's a lot of young people who are smart, who are intelligent, who, who have the skills, who have you know, the technology and digital intelligence that can come together and look for solutions and create you know, infrastructures, digital infrastructure that can solve this problem. So the, the, the faster the government understands that and, you, and find a way to create a community that brings all the smart, intelligent young people together, the better for them and for all of us. 
All right, thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.